In this lesson, we're going to talk about the statistical model for ANCOVA and talk about the ANOVA table with and without the covariance. So really what we're going to be doing is comparing the randomized complete design ANOVA table, which we learned about in lesson two, now with a randomized complete design with a covariate in play. So recall from our last lesson, we had this motivating example of the peanut yield where in this problem, we were interested in the effect of the three fertilizers on the yield of peanut plants in a completely randomized design. And in addition to applying the three fertilizers, the researchers measured the starting height of the peanut plants. And that um, we think that that starting height is associated with the peanut yield. We were also interested in how do we incorporate this starting height, which is a continuous variable into our model. And we discussed that we would introduce it as a covariate. So right here, um, we're just going to talk about some of the characteristics of a completely randomized design with one covariate. And our characteristics is, are that we have one treatment factor, which in this case is the fertilizer. We have one covariate, which is the height of the starting height of the peanut plants. We have T treatments, and we have B EUs per treatment. And so that's going to leave us with a total number of EUs of B times T. Okay, so for our peanut data, our treatment is three treatments for the fertilizer. Our height is our covariate. We have 10 plants per the fertilizer. I'll show you guys the data in the next lesson. And then we have a total of 30 EUs. This part right here would be like our replicates. Replications, okay? So an ANCOVA is going to merge the idea of an ANOVA analysis, i.e. our treatment factors, with the regression analysis of us having this kind of continuous factor. Um, and technically, we can parameterize an ANOVA as in a regression and vice versa. Um, and then we'll talk more about that in the last lesson. So we'll get there. Um, before stepping straight into the ANCOVA table with the covariate, I want to just back us up and remind ourselves of what the statistical model of a CRD was without a covariate, okay? So we had our Y, which was our response, we had our grand mean, and we had our treatment effect, and then we had our random errors. And our ANOVA table was where we had our sums of squares treatment, sums of squares um, error, our degree of freedom was n minus t. Our, when we were testing our treatment effects, we were looking uh, at hypotheses of alpha one equal to alpha t, which is equal to zero versus one of them differs. Really we were testing was, is there no treatment effect versus there is a treatment effect, okay? And when we were doing this, um, looking at these, the null versus the alternative, if we said that the alternative or rejected the null, which air quotes accepted the alternative, we really would be comparing this model versus this model, where this model would be the alternative and this one would be the null. Okay, our F statistic would follow. Um, SST divided by its degree of freedoms divided by the sums of squares error divided its degrees of freedom. And again, we would reject the null and conclude there is a treatment effect if the p value was less than our um, alpha or significance level. Now, all we're going to do with adding this covariate is going to be extending our original model to have something that looks similar to something we saw with regression and extending this table to have another row. So let's look at that. So here we have a statistical model with a covariate in a CRD, a completely randomized design. So we still have our response, we still have our grand mean, we still have our treatment effect, but now what's new is this beta x, which should look familiar from our regression with multiple linear regression, okay? Where this beta one can still be thought of as the partial slope, 
and measures the expected increase or decrease depending on the sign in the response due to one unit increase in the covariate provided that you're also in the same treatment that's being applied. We are introducing our ANOVA table with our covariate. We also always want to use our type three sums of squares, okay? So, and I put this in blue as kind of like a little side note is when we're when we introduce our covariate into our analysis, we're going to lose that idea of a balanced design. And so if we recall from our lesson six unbalanced design, we need to use our type three sums of squares, which is a default and jump. My R users, it's not a default in R, but I'll walk you through that when we get there in our video. Okay, so that's in blue just to kind of recap and remember where this sums of three, this type three sums of squares is coming from which was less than six. So we saw the extension in our statistical model to have this extra term here. Where that comes into play is now we're gonna have a covariant sums of squares for that. And then our degree of freedom is one. Um, our degree, this one is coming from the fact that our covariate is continuous. And this is the nice thing about the analysis of covariance is that there is only one degree of freedom that we're losing. If we were in a block or a randomized complete block design or even a generalized randomized complete block design, this degree of freedom would be the number of blocks minus one. And so we would potentially be losing more degrees of freedom and that would eventually impact our sums of squares of our covariate or sums of squares of our block, which would be there. Okay. And so one thing we gain from doing an analysis of covariance is um, we get a reduced sums of squares error since our sums of squares covariance is going to pull from that and explain an additional part of variability. And we only lose um, one degree of freedom in our sums of squares, which is often worth it, only losing one. Now, if we start to add a bunch of covariates, then we might not see as much of an effect and we might not want to do that. Okay. When we're testing our treatment effects with the covariate, our hypotheses are still the same as they were previously. So our, our um, null is still looking, uh, there's no effect of the treatment. Our alternative is there is an effect. And when we're looking at these two um, hypotheses, what we're really doing is comparing this model, which we would get from our alternative. So if the alternative was true, this is not zero, so it's in the model, versus our null, where we would say that is pretty much zero, and we'd be left with this reduced model. So in this analysis, we're trying to decide pretty much between these two models. Our F statistics still follows the same idea, but our degrees of freedom are slightly different. And we have this extra minus one compared to when we had just the randomized complete block design. This extra minus one is coming from right here because our sums of squares total, our sums of squares of our covariate and our sums of squares error still need to add up to equal our total sums of squares. Same thing with our degrees of freedom. And so that's where this minus one's coming from is because we're pulling it out because of this covariate. We would still reject our null and conclude that there is a treatment effect if our p-value is also less than our um, alpha. So with that, that is the model in the ANCOVA table. In our next lesson, we are going to apply what we just learned to our peanut yield example.